Here we go. Film. Oh, oh, he's there. Oh, oh, oh. He wants to be exactly where I am. There we go. Huh. So I'd like to start by saying thank you to everybody who keeps watching these little segments. I look at my analytics um, because data pleases me and I'm just curious. And hey, that's mine. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. Now he's sitting on the book. Before I go back into another weekend reading vlog, I would like to say thank you so much to everybody who watches them. I do look at my analytics now and again, and it is so gratifying to see that these videos are the most popular ones on my channel, because they're the ones I like doing the best. So now, reading. It's Friday, and I am super excited for another weekend. It's the last weekend of September. When did that happen? <sighs> a book that I really want to read, Aurora Blazing, by Jesse Mihalik, is coming out on October the 1st. So this weekend, I want to reread Polaris Rising, the first book in the series, in order to catch myself up before I jump right into that next one. I have it on pre-order. I am so excited. I loved Polaris Rising so much. But you know what? I want to tell you about it over this weekend. Of course, I do have a bit of a dilemma. On the one hand, I definitely want to read Polaris Rising before I jump into Aurora Blazing, and I kind of want to jump into Aurora Blazing on Tuesday when it comes out. But... If you'll remember two weekends ago, I read the first book in a trilogy um, that was my favorite, one of my favorite trilogies when I was a teenager. And I wanted to read all three of them, but I got through one of them. And I have the second one right here. It's very tempting. How many pages does this one have? 449 pages, wow. I remember struggling through the 300 some odd last time, but I also really like to challenge myself. You don't think I could read two books in one weekend, do you? Hmm. I decided I'm going to try it. I'm going to read both of them. So I've accomplished about 60% of what I wanted to do today. To be honest, that's how my to-do lists go anyway. I always put way more stuff than I can actually accomplish on that list and then knock off as much as I possibly can. Unfortunately, I've also met the, probably the upper limit right now of what my wrists can handle without it being a problem over the weekend. So, that's an easy decision for which book I'm going to be reading first. Fine, I'll let you know a secret. I've already started Polaris Rising. I'm an hour in. <laughs> I can't help it. It was a really good book the first time around. I read it back in June, I believe. And I am every bit as captivated on the reread. Maybe even more so. I remember reading it the first time and She's the princess to this empire and she gets captured because there's a bounty on her head um, because she left her father because she didn't want to get married. And I was like, that's kind of a little bit cliche, don't you think? Um, so I almost put it down, but I'm so glad I didn't. Like around the time where I am right now, we're about an hour in where she's made a deal with um, this known murderer who has... Uh, this big bounty on his head. Apparently he killed like 12 people in his squad, both um, soldiers that were under him and his commanders. And um, I know things about him because I have read the book before, but you don't as the reader when you're starting out. Um, he's just a very dynamic character. He's got a lot of mystery to him. The entire book is in first person point of view, which I like more and more. Um, the longer I read. Um, ten years ago, I wouldn't touch a first-person point-of-view book, and these days I can't get enough of them. 
especially if it happens to be science fiction or fantasy. I don't know why, but like the limited scope of the point of view really does it for me. I like having t that mystery about the other characters um, and while simultaneously being very close to the point of view character. Um, now Ada von Hausenberg is the main character. Like I said, she is a princess who decided to leave her house because she did not want to get married to the man that her father wants her to marry. Um, he's kind of a dick. Um, and so she's been spending like the past two years just trying to be a regular person and stay off of her father's radar. So she's got the biggest bounty on her head, and this guy that she's locked in a cell with has the second biggest bounty on his head. Um, and because she grew up in such a political atmosphere, she's very good at manipulating people. So you know that she's going to escape this first time. But there's such a wrench thrown in her plans, like as soon as she's plotting her escape, trying to decide if she can, uh, if she can trust Marcus, who is her cellmate, she is sitting down to dinner with the captain who she has wrapped around her fingers and then in comes that wrench um, in the form of her betrothed who she definitely does not feel safe uh, being around. So now she's under even more pressure to escape and has no choice but to trust Marcus and I just love how competent she is. So I'm only like a twelfth of the way through the the audiobooks about twelve and a half hours long and I just am really enjoying this reread through it. We'll see if I remember all of the plot points. So it is 6.30 at night on a Friday night and ideally I would be reading for the rest of the night but if my wrists kind of feel better later on I'm going to try editing and right now I've been standing for way too long talking to you so I'm going to have a nice cup of chai and a pumpkin spice cookie because it's pumpkin spice season yay and i will get back to reading i'll give you an update tomorrow so i read four hours of polaris rising last night out of 12. yes i will finish this book this weekend i think um, but I haven't started the second book and now I'm starting to feel the reading pressure of my goal to read both books. When I made this goal, I forgot that I am not, in fact, sitting at home all weekend um, reading my book, which is the unfortunate part. Um, I will get some reading time today, uh, but I'm also going out to see friends later. I feel like this encapsulates my feelings. They're book nerds too, they understand. Other than that, I will be um, playing some video games with Mark. Um, I will leave the, the link in the description because we're trying to start up again a weekly stream where I play video games that I have no idea how to play and he draws something at the same time on a live stream. We've done this a couple times with um, an old school Pokemon game uh, that I was enjoying, but my wrists got pretty bad there for a while, so we kind of stopped and then never picked it up again. I'm saying that once a week, on a Saturday, I'm going to be able to commit to doing this. <laughs> Let's hope that that's actually true, because I don't like to renege on my word. But I'm looking forward to doing this again. I love um, Mark's drawing. Uh, obviously I'm biased uh, because he is my partner. His drawing was part of the reason why we started dating. <laughs> okay, he drew me as a dragon and I never looked back. <laughs> so yeah, those are my plans and reading, of course, all the reading. Um, tomorrow I have a lot of yard work to be doing, which is very good for audiobooks. So I'm going to try to leave Polaris Rising for tomorrow mostly, which means that today I'm going to be opening up that beautiful book, A Tremor in the Bitter Earth by Katya Riemann. So for now, I better say goodbye so that I can start those errands and finish those errands and get you reading my book. I am back from my outing with friends. 
in just a little bit, I will be feeding myself full of pizza and then doing the live stream for Twitch, which I'm looking forward to. I think I'm going to play Battle Block Theater unless Mark Strong arms me into doing something else, just because I'm in the mood to play Battle Block Theater. It's really fun if you haven't played this game. Um, it's also a good multiplayer game. I play it with Mark all the time, so... And, and the beginning of this sequence is everything. Like, the people who wrote this game are hilarious. But reading, I mean, because this is a reading vlog. I had every intention of picking up this book right here. It's even sitting next to me where I read on the couch right here. And I opened it. I opened it. And I read the first page. And then I thought to myself how much I would rather be reading Polaris Rising. So I read that instead. I'm about halfway through now. Initially, Ada had offered to pay Marcus to help her escape from this Merc ship before her betrothed got his hands on her. So for the most of the half of the book, they've been trying to escape and stay escaped and uh, find a place of relative safe safety. At this point in the book, they found that place. Um, she's not safe forever, but she's probably safe for a few days to kind of calm down. So she's now taken out the money, paid Marcus, and she's at the point where she believes that Marcus will now leave her because he has no reason to stick around. And I really like this part because um, we're at the point where there's a lot of tension between them. They have... Um, spent a lot of time getting to know each other a little bit better and earning each other's trust um, just because they've had to rely on each other for survival for this long. And there's a couple great new characters. I love the new fence characters. There's two of them. Um, one of which is Veronica, who's this very suave, um, no-nonsense kind of woman. And I really like her a lot. So I have... Uh, done everything that I intend to do today except for streaming and eating pizza and I will be listening to more of Polaris Rising tonight. I can't help myself. It's just a really, really good book. Um, just as good on the reread so far as it was reading through it the first time, so I have such high hopes for book two. I can't wait. Yeah. So it is Sunday. Sunday is my yard work day, especially with winter coming up. So I have a lengthy list of things that I have to do outside, which is perfect for the five hours of audiobook that I have left. Edgar's going to be very disappointed because he's not invited outside while I am. So Polaris Rising. It's come to a point with a lot of political intrigue and I'm going to try to give you a brief overview without giving away um, most of the spoilers that you learn throughout reading the book. Um, so one of the basics of this world is the fact that it is run by the consortium and the consortium is run by three different houses. Ada, the main character, is from one of these houses. She's the fifth uh, child of the current head of the house of the von Hausenbergs. There's also um, two other houses, including Rockhurst, which is uh, the one that she was supposed to marry into, but ran away to avoid. And all three houses are always at odds, jostling, trying to get control of the, um, the economy, of, of everything, basically. Um, and one of the major focus points for everybody is trying to get a faster than light drive um, for their spaceships, uh, FTL drive. Right now they're doing it via jumps. Um, so it takes, you can, do, you can do a jump from one point in space to another point in space, but then it takes about six hours or more to, uh, to cool down before you can do it again. And the researchers in all three houses have been working on this problem and the best breakthrough is shaving off minutes sort of thing. But a lot of this book um, focuses around advancements in that field and the political intrigue that comes with it and the threats of war where one house wants to monopolize over the other houses and where Ada fits on into all of this um, because she's got a personal stake in this as well. So 
we've gotten past the point where like her and Marcus's relationship is still a little bit rocky, um, but she's focusing all of her attention on trying to figure out what um, Rockhurst is doing right now and how she can best help her family and her people. Um, so I've got a lot of danger, a lot of action, a lot of political intrigue, and Basically, it's at a point where I really don't want to put this book down, so I'm glad that I have it in audiobook and won't have to. It is Monday! I meant to film an update last night. Um, I finished Polaris Rising around 7.30, 8 o'clock, somewhere around there, and... I loved it. I absolutely loved it the second time through. One of the things I love best about this book is the uh, main character. I love Ada. As Marcus puts it at the end, she is loyal, she is kind, and she is cunning. And I that combination is just great. She does not back down when she wants something. Yeah, she knows her odds, but she'll still go in to save a friend. The next book takes place from Bianca's point of view. Um, Bianca is Ada's sister, and Bianca is just as loyal, just as cunning. Um, she's got a different skill set, which I really like, and a mysterious past, and a thing going with the head of security. Um, and I look forward to seeing their little enemies turn to lovers. I like that trope so much, and I like this world a lot. Um, now the Rockhursts and the Von Hausenbergs are, are at war, so going forward, um, the next books will deal with the complications of the war. So I told myself last night, hey, I've got some time before I have to go to bed. Why don't I try to read as much as possible? Maybe I'll get like a hundred pages in and uh, make some significant progress on the second book that I wanted to read for the weekend. And I read... The prologue. I was just, I was in a little bit of a book hangover, so I didn't really feel like reading more than that. Um, so A Tremor in the Bitter Earth is book two of the Tilmarin Chronicles. Um, in book one, Galtry and her sister Mervion saved their country Tilmark from being reabsorbed into the Byzantine Empire. In book two, it seems like the Byzantine Empire is now trying to retaliate um, by making an even bigger push to get Tilmarin back and to make them break their oath uh, to the goddesses. If I remember correctly, I believe that very soon in the beginning of this book, uh, Mervion is incapacitated. Maybe she's poisoned? Maybe she's bespelled? I can't really remember, but she's taken out of commission for this book again. She wasn't in the last book because she was captured and Galtry had to go and save her. And I think in this book, Galtry has to go into the Byzantine Empire um, for some reason to either get a counterspell or to get an antidote in order to save her sister again. Um, and of course, Martin goes with her, if I remember right. If I'm remembering wrong, then I'll be very disappointed. I like Martin. I'll be reading this book today, and I, I I won't even say that I hope to to finish it before Aurora Blazing comes out tomorrow, um, but I hope to get a good chunk of the way through so that after I'm done reading Aurora Blazing, you know I'm going to switch, um, I will get back and finish reading this book by the end of the week before next week's um, reading vlog. Once again, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and let me know what you read this weekend. I'm really interested and I always need ideas for what to read next. Um, so until next time, happy reading. For those of you in the Cornwall, Ontario area, I'm doing an event on Saturday, October the 5th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Cornwall Public Library in Program Room 1. Since that was a large mouthful for you to listen to and for me to say, I'm going to also link the details in the description. I'd love for you to uh, come by. I'm going to be trying to make cake pops. I don't really know how to make cake pops, but I got this really nice little kit while I was garage sailing this summer. So I'm going to attempt it. And if that doesn't work out, I promise there will be cookies. Um, the event is basically for people who have questions about writing or about National Novel Writing Month or about the new site that we've just been launched. 
I will be there, my co-ML will be there, and uh, we will be answering all of your questions. If you don't have any questions and you just want to sit and prepare for National Novel Writing Month, you are welcome to join us. Or if you just want to come talk to me about books, I like to talk about books always. So I will hopefully see you there next Saturday.